Hey guys, welcome back to Peachy Doodles. Uh, today I'm going to kind of be doing this little, I guess, tutorial thing. Uh, just showing you around the um, program I use for digital art, which is Fire Alpaca. I'm making this video because this is the program I use, and I love this program. I think it's a gem, and it's completely free. Um, I thought that for people who are on a bet, an artist on a budget, who is like me, who's like, a, I'm a young artist, I don't have money, so if you want to create art and maybe you're young and you don't have a job, or you're just on a budget, uh, I think this program is a hidden gem in the rough or whatever. Um, it is a really great program. It kind of mimics a lot of the programs um, that cost money. It's completely free, and it even comes with... Um, in online, the online website is is very very easy to navigate, to find, and download. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing a video on how to download Fire Alpaca, leave comments down below. I can totally walk you through it. But the website is so easy to uh, navigate and to follow. The instructions are very simple. They even have an um, online website that will help you um, make animations with their program because they have a whole animation system that I don't know if I'm going to go through it in this video but if you guys want a video just on the animation side of Fire Alpaca I can do that. I don't use it very much but I know some stuff about it. Um, I'm not super good with it so that's probably why I'm not going to put it um, too much in depth in this video but you can make animations on Fire Alpaca, upload um, I mean, you can use the website to help you um, transfer them into the format you need um, to make an animation. They can transfer it into a GIF, which is very helpful. You can save it um, as like separate pictures and then you put it into the uh, website online and then they export it out as a GIF. So that's one of the things I, could, I might talk about in uh, an upcoming video, but in this video, I'm just going to go over the basics of Fire Alpaca for all of you guys who are wondering what it is. So, when you open up Fire Alpaca, you're going to get this kind of format. It might look different depending on your settings, um, but this is just a one window format that I have right now. I have This is all customizable, how you want this to be set up, which is you can just set up kind of in the top settings bar on under view or window. Um, but this is how I like having it set up, and I think this is how it came when I opened it. Um, I have or, or something similar to this. You always have this toolbar on the side that has all of the tools, the pencil, the eraser, you know, the basic tools I'll be going over in a second. Um, I have the color uh, slider things over here. Uh, I don't have a wheel, so I can't really say color wheel, but it's this color plane with it um, desaturated on this side, darker on this side, saturated up here, um, desaturated saturated and dark, saturated and dark, saturated and light, and desaturated and light, which is white. Um, so then you, the hue slider right here. Um, so that's the, like the color setup right here. Then you have, I have um, the palette right here, which is just saved colors. You can save colors. So if you want to use them in multiple drawings, you can save them here. And every time you up, um, Put, like open up Fire Alpaca, these colors will be the same. They're not limited to one drawing. They are saved in your Fire Alpaca things. So when you open them up, no matter the drawing you're opening up, um, this will be the same. So I have kind of the colors I like to sketch in and some of the basic colors that I was using for November. Um, I never completed that, but I saved down all the colors. And then just basic like colors I use a lot for my videos and colors I needed to save. Or wanted to save, and then you, um, how I have it set up is there's the palette and the brush preview you can switch between. I never use the brush preview, but basically, um, when you change the brush settings, you can like see what they'll look like. I don't ever use this, I've never used it, but I so I prefer to keep it on the palette just so I can see all the uh, colors that I have on hotkeys. Basically, um, then you have the brush controls, which is uh, was which definitely was here when I opened up the program first, which is very important that I love keeping right here. You can, again, move it around. You can take it out of this place and put it over here. Um, but I just like keeping it all right here, all my brush and color settings. 
Um, this is basically how it came. Um, this is the size of the brush and this is the opacity of the brush. Um, and each kind of, each um, brush type has different brush controls, but this is just a basic pen. Um, down here you have the brush types and the options to add brushes and delete brushes. So this is basically your brush inventory, all the different types of brushes that you um, have starting and have uploaded um, and have added. So basically it comes with a lot of brushes to start. It comes with all of these brushes to start. It about ends right there at polka dot. Um, the ones after polka dot you see on here are all ones that I've added. Um, customized brushes are ones I've downloaded off the internet. Um, but all the way up to this polka dot brush, all of this it it has, except I may have added this one. No, I think I just changed the name. I don't know. But all of these come with um, the first starting of our five pack. So they have a wide range of brushes that you can use. Um, but you can also create your own brushes, which I can go over in a separate video. I'm not going to go into depth about creating brushes in this video. But... Um, it is possible you can download them off the internet also, like you can do with lots of other um, programs I know that are more expensive, so that's a really awesome feature. I've used it many times to make patterns and things. Um, so on this side, I have it set up where this is my navigator, and you can't really see it right now because it's not, I don't have anything. Let me get something on the screen. Um, I'm just going to open up a new image. I'll go over that later. But basically, now that I have an image here, you're going to be able to see what this side, this whole side of it kind of does. Um, I have the navigator. This is just shows me where I am on the canvas. And you can also tilt the canvas with this little slider. Um, and just if you want to restore it back, you can hit this little button. Um, this is zoom in, zoom out, but I have hotkeys on my tablet for that, so I don't ever use these. Um, this is, again, flipping it, but you can use a slider for that, so I don't ever use that either. Um, this is flipping the canvas horizontally and vertically. I don't know if you can really tell right now because they don't have a drawing on it. But um, basically when you're drawing, you can flip the canvas back and forth to see if it looks right. Um, that's something that I don't use often enough, but I should. Um, here is the layer setup, which is one of the most important things um, to have in Valpaca, one of the most important things in digital art in general. This um, right here, this slider, tells you the opacity of the layer, so the whole layer you can lower the opacity or whatever. This is the blending options. They have quite a few. They just added some with the new update, so I haven't looked through all of the new ones. It used to stop at burn, I believe. Now they have soft light, hard light, hue. I haven't experimented with all of them yet because they're just from the new update. But I can do a whole other video on blending types and what they do if you guys are interested. Just a little tell me down below. I think that would be a great video um, because I use these a lot for shading. Um, then you have these three little settings here which are very important. Protect Alpha means that you can um, you can click this on and you'll only be able to draw on what's already on the page. So let me show you that. So I'll take a brown and I'll kind of just do some scribbles if you see it. I'll make my pen bigger. So it's like that and if I hit Protect um, Alpha, I'm going to change my color so you can see this. If I don't have Protect Alpha on, I can just draw right over this, right? Makes sense. Um, but if I have Protect Alpha on, I can only draw on what I've already, that's already on the layer while this is checked. So I can, so this is what this allows me to do in File Alpaca, which I use a lot, is change the color of something without um, drawing over it or like bleeding out where I don't want it, basically. So this is really useful for changing the color of line art. You just switch on Protect Alpha, change the color to the color you want and then you can just ump the brush and just change everything with a couple like swipes you don't have to go over stuff again which I used to have to do in my old program which was so tedious so I love this protect alpha feature it's a lifesaver the clipping feature um I probably will I could do another video just on layers alone there's so much stuff but I'll just show you it really briefly what this means if you have one, this is kind of like Protect Alpha except on a separate layer. So if you have a layer here which obviously has the scribbles on it, this layer on top, you can clip it to the bottom layer, which means anything you put on this layer will only show up on the stuff that's on the bottom layer, and like anything that's drawn on the bottom layer, but if you scribble over here, nothing will show up, but if you scribble over here, it will. What this does that's different from Protect Alpha 
is that it's on its own layer, so you can change it without changing this. So, like, if I decided I, I don't want that anymore, I can just delete it, or I can, I can always unclip this, too, and everything that I scribbled outside the lines will show up. And then I can clip it again, and everything is cut out. So I could do stuff and then clip it instead of, like, drawing right on it, which risks me messing it up. And, um, of course, you have the undo button, but this is really helpful for patterns if you just spread a pattern everywhere. And then you could clip it to one part of the shirt or something like that. So clipping is really useful. Locking is really self-explanatory. You can't draw on that layer until you unlock it. This is helpful <clears throat> when you finish your line art and you just you lock it right that second because you know you're going to forget and you're going to accidentally click on that layer and mess it all up. Um, this uh, the next tab is relatively new to the program, but I do know it because it was introduced a while ago. This is the reference tab. The reference tab, in essence, is so simple, but so brilliant. The reference tab allows you to pull up any picture on your computer, and it puts it in this little screen for you, and you can draw and look at the picture at the same time. Before, you would have to switch back and forth between two drawings, or you would have to, like, you would try and keep it, because if you opened up a picture on your computer and put it right next to it, the second you click back on Fire Alpaca, the, um, it would, like, come up and you, it would, the Fire Alpaca would come over top of it. Uh, it would still be open on your desktop, but Fire Alpaca would be in front of it and it would block it all off so you couldn't see it. So that's why they added the reference tab because it's inside Fire, Fire Alpaca. So, and inside your window, so you can look at the reference and draw at the same time, which is really awesome. I will open up a reference for you just to be an example. I'll just open up one of my own artwork because I don't want to show you how to artwork. But um, if I open this up, as you can see, so I opened up a reference on here, and um, as you can see, I can look at this and I can draw on this at the same time. It's so simple, but it solves a problem that was a thing in lots of other programs where you can't, on your computer, have a, um, another kind of program open and look at it at the same time unless you, you know, you like squash your your file packet at the side and they'll mess up the proportions of the window. So the reference tab is really cool. I don't use it a lot, but I should. <laughs> show you how to set up basically something on your canvas, all those little settings, and how you kind of start your drawing tools in a separate video um, instead of doing in this video because this video is getting really long. Basically I'm just gonna show you this is file edit layer filter select snap color view tool window help. Um, you don't really need help but these are the things you're gonna need uh, when you're using file packa and file you have all of your um, settings and ways to make new um, things and export it and save and stuff like that. Edit is just things like flipping the canvas, copy and pasting, rotating, things like that. Layer is all about your layers. Um, over here, you can add folders and layers and duplicate things from that, but you can also do that all on here, so you don't really need this unless you are rotating. Um, you, unless you want to rotate just a layer um, or some of these properties, uh, you don't really need that layer of that section very much because you can just do it on the program window. Um, for filter, this one uh, I might make a separate video about or add it into one of the other videos, but basically your filters are, um, your filters you can filter your whole drawing, uh, change the hue and level and saturation from, or add blur from here. Um, those are your filters you can put on over your drawing. Basically, selection, this is just how you select, deselect, inverse your selection, expand your selection, things like that. Um, snap, I am going to go over in the tools video, um, but this is basically just all the stuff you can access on the snap window, um, but up on the top bar. Color. Um, this is kind of your preferences for your color stuff over here, and also, um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. Just but your color stuff is over here, you're locking your palette down here. Um, basically, if you want a color bar or a color wheel, so that changes to a color wheel now. I prefer color bar, so that's what I do, just because I'm used to it, but color wheel is good too. Um, your view, this is like full screen mode, which I'm in right now. Onion skin mode, I'm going to talk about this in a separate video because this is the animation part of Fire Alpaca, so this has to do with animation. Um, transparent background, that's just if your background 
when you don't have any layers is transparent. Comic guidelines, that's all about comic stuff, which I might do another video on when I kind of learn it more. Brush size, that's just if you want your brush size down here, I think. Um, then if you want a grid, if you want to flip stuff horizontally, it's just the view. Um, tools, this just tells you all of your tools and which one you're on, so that you can pick from here, but it's also up here. Window, this is just your, um, what windows you have open, and if you want a one window kind of selection and then help, you can just help stuff, but I never use that. So, that's what up, that's what's up there. Now I'm going to show you, like I said I would, how to make a new drawing and the settings that come with that. So, obviously you're going to hit new. You can also hit new via clipboard, this is just if you copy something and you want to make it make a new drawing of that, uh, make it like a new file basically with that in it, but we're just going to do new, so we don't have anything in our clipboard. Then you'll come up to standard and comic, again comic, this is where you pick things like your, this is how you set up a comic template, so if you want I can do another video on that um, once I kind of do some research, but this is your standard if you just want to start a drawing. Um, basically, you're going to have your the width of your canvas and the height of your canvas um, in pixels. So, obviously changing this is what's going to make this kind of white part or transparent part of your canvas bigger. Um, so, whatever is in, isn't your canvas is this gray. And the white here um, is what my canvas is. So, I think this one's probably 2000 by 2000. Um, this I'm just really zoomed out right now. Um, paper size, if you don't want to do this pixel size thing, you can pick a generic size of paper, um, and like, you know, actual paper, this will like mimic the size of that, so the centimeters by centimeters instead of like, you know, pixels by pixels and things, um, so that will change this, um, and you can reverse, I don't know why you want to do that, but, um, this, it records all your history of all of the canvas sizes you have done before, so like 2,000 pixel by, so this is just like the ones I usually do or I've done before, 2,000 by 2,000, 3,000 by 2,000, 100 by 100, that's for making brushes, you need that measurement when you're making custom brushes, but that will be its own video too. Um, 1,600 by 1,200, I think that was the default, um, I, so I did use that one a lot, um, 2,000 by 2,000, 1,600 by 1,600, um, and then that that one. So, yeah, and then you can just pick your background color here if you want to do a color. I'll just always leave it on transparent for me that way. This is the resolution, so basically how good quality your stuff is. Just hit OK and you just create a new one. Um, this is now, once you've gotten here, what it's going to look like. If you've chosen a transparent background, there's not going to be anything except this one layer, which is obviously transparent right now because there's nothing on it. If I added something on this layer, the, this this transparent kind of block stuff isn't on the layer, that's just the background. This is, the red stuff is what's on the layer right now. Um, so just scribbling, <laughs> this is what's on the layer. Um, nothing else is on the layer, so you can't delete this first initial layer because then you'll have nothing. So if you want to delete this layer, you make another one, then you can go back and delete this one. Um, so, yeah, those are kind of the settings for setting up your new canvas. All the other kind of stuff I'm going to go over in their own separate videos so tools and um, just breaking down that kind of stuff animation but this was just a basics like if you open this program up and you've never used a drawing program before you've never used one like it um, you might be a little overwhelmed there's a lot of windows and boxes this video was just to go over them what they mean and how to set up your canvas so since this video was getting so long I broke the tools video and like the in-depth kind of stuff video I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna, I, I broke it off, I'm gonna put it in another video, so that will be coming, you um, guys can answer polls and um, leave comments down below to tell me your input on what you want to see next, if you guys like this one, give it a like, subscribe, if you want to see more, if you want to see more Fire Alpaca videos, maybe you're getting into Fire Alpaca and you want to get all the the tutorial updates when I post finding down below I love that too input you can put requests um, for videos or just for art uh, questions down below as long as you are respectful I will answer all of your guys' questions and talk to you guys down in the comments so let's get a community going share stuff talk to um, each other um, all down in those comic comments I will put links to fire alpaca where you can download it the materials I use to do digital art and all of my social medias. So yeah, follow me there, follow me here. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!